You'll learn the regulations pertaining to your pilot's license and also those covering your airplane. Okay, let's get started on this lesson. We'll begin by reviewing some of the different pilot certificates that you can earn. Now, a student pilot certificate is where it all begins. For many people, the student pilot certificate is printed on the same piece of paper as a student's medical certificate, like the one we see right here. This certificate limits a pilot to fly only when accompanied by an instructor or on supervised solo flights once certain training requirements are met. As you remember, a student pilot may not carry a passenger or fly for compensation or hire. There are other limitations that apply to student pilots as well, but your CFI will go over those if you decide to pursue your flight instructor rating. The next certificate is one that you should already have in your possession if you're studying this course. That's a private pilot certificate. It grants the freedom to carry passengers or even carry cargo as long as neither are done for compensation or hire. The pilot may share the operational cost of the flight with his or her passengers and may even act as pilot in command in connection with a business or place of employment, as long as the flying is incidental to that business or operation. We'll talk a little more about the definition of compensation in just a minute. A commercial pilot certificate allows you to act as pilot in command of an aircraft that's carrying passengers or cargo for hire. If you wish to conduct commercial operations more than 50 nautical miles from your airport or at night, then you must also possess an instrument rating which most commercial pilots already have. Commercial pilot operations include things like banner towing, local sightseeing, aerial photography, and crop dusting. However, having a commercial pilot certificate does not mean you're cleared to set up your own airline with your Cessna 172. There are limitations on your service. Moving right along, an Airline Transport Pilot Certificate, or ATP, is often thought of as the doctorate of aviation degrees. ATPs have the privileges of a commercial and instrument rated pilot, but may also instruct other pilots for the purpose of air transportation in the aircraft category, class, and type in which he or she is rated. An ATP is also required to serve as pilot in command of a multi-engine commuter flight. All pilot certificates, except the student pilot certificate, are valid indefinitely unless they're surrendered, suspended, or revoked. They're also issued without expiration dates. And remember, if you're ever asked to present your pilot certificate to any official representative of the FAA or local law enforcement agency, make it clear that you're not surrendering it, rather just presenting it for inspection. Further, a pilot must always have their pilot certificate, acceptable photo ID, and current medical certificate in their immediate possession whenever acting as pilot in command. In most cases, a state-issued driver's license is sufficient for a photo ID, but be sure to check with your instructor for other acceptable options.